Hi guys. Okay, we'll get started because um, it's a little bit shorter today. It'll be about a half an hour. Um, what could be considered movement prep for um, if you're doing a lot more running in these times of, of confinement or social isolation and uh, biking, um, working in your garden, lifting, a HIIT workout, anything like that. Um, the following uh, things you can pick and choose what you like from them or you can use it as a workout in itself by just kind of upping your upping your reps. So we'll start with um, some CARS. So CARS is uh, an acronym for controlled articular rotations and it means we're going to be doing joint circles. So we're going to do the whole body. It'll, it takes about 10 minutes and I do this every morning. So you go from top down head to toe and we're going to sort of give every joint in our bodies a little bit of love. So much the way, much like the way, hopefully everybody flosses their teeth. This is a way that we can speak directly to our joints and get our joints to talk to our brains and, and send information up about where we are in space, build your proprioception and also build some longevity and capacity in those joints for working and how we want them to work in the activities that we like to do. So we'll start just with our neck. So what I want to say about your neck is um, if you feel any pinching or anything, just make the movement smaller or just avoid the area altogether where you have pain and that actually applies to all of your joints. So, but what we'll start by doing is just irradiating. So it's just a, a, a word that um, FRC uses for, for tensing your body. So self-created tension. So start by making fists. So your standing feet are a little bit wider than than say um, hip width apart or your shoulder um, shoulder joint, uh, excuse me, your hip joints. And then you're just going to clench your fists and then you're going to breathe in and then breathe out. And then the tensing that you get naturally in your belly, you want to keep that and you're going to make your breathing a little bit shallower. So you're going to keep the tense, um, what you've tensed in your low belly and the sides and the back. So it's good tension. We're building it where it's self-created. We're building it ourselves. And then you want to ramp up that tension. So say that's about 10%. Squeeze your fists and then we're going to ramp it up to 10 to 20. And then maybe to 50. So you're radiating out from your belly and your chest. You're squeezing all those intercostals, your back, and then your shoulders. And they're moving out towards, so even up towards the neck and then down towards uh, the toes and the hands. And then say we're up to 75, 80 and keep squeezing, so your bums squeezing, your quads, your hamstrings, and your arms squeezing into your fists, and then up to 100, and then instead of just releasing, let's go down the way, so turn the dial down, so release a little bit, but not all the way, so go down to about 80, so still breathing, keeping that tension packed in your lower abdomen, and down to say 50, you start to release a little bit, but gradually without letting it all go down to about 25 and 20 and then keep that little bit of tension. So everything's turned on your bum still firm and your legs have a little bit of tension. You still got that breath packed in the low belly and then we'll keep that as we move each joint through the range of motion. So we'll start with the neck. So keep everything on without clenching too much. So about 20% and then chin is going to come down to chest. And then you're going to slowly scrape your collarbone as you look over your right shoulder. And then ear comes down slightly as you lift the chin up. Don't go too far. And then down the other side, look over your left shoulder, scrape your chin along the left collarbone. And then we'll do another one in that direction. So if you've got anything talking to you on the opposite side, you want to make sure that that's not happening, that's closing angle pain, and then go the other way. So scrape along the left collarbone, look over the left shoulder, pretend you've got a sharpie attached to your chin, and you're tracing a circle, and then we'll do one more in that direction, breathing through the nose. And then doing these cards is another way of sort of assessing how your body feels on any given day. It's a way of checking in with your body. Next, scapula. So keep fists or palms can stay on either side of the, of the outer thighs. And we're going to 
move, roll the shoulders forward as the shoulder blades slide to the outside of your upper back. Then lift them up, shrug them up towards your ears, and then slide them back like you're pinching something, pinching that same sharpie maybe at your spine, and then move them down like you're tightening them into your back pockets. One more in that direction, so slide them out, around to the edges of your upper back, up towards your ears, towards the back, pinching them at your spine, making sure that you're not doing this, so trying to keep the spine still, and then down into the back pockets, and then reverse the movement up, forward, sliding them away from one another, and then down, and then pinching at the back, elevating up towards the ears, sliding them forward, and then let that go. Next, pin your elbows in towards your waist, and then palms will face up, thumbs out. Then you're going to move the palms up like you're trying to read something. My brother-in-law needs those reading glasses now, so you bring your phone or something closer. And then rotate the palms down without bending at the wrists or at the fingers. And then hands come down like you're offering a low five to somebody. And then rotate back up. And rotate down. One more time. Come up. Make fists. And then just make some circles with the wrists, one direction, and the other. Good, and then we'll get more specifically into the wrist. So hand comes to the forearm, so not, your elbow can still stay pinned, and then extend. So you don't want to bend the fingers here. So it's wrist extension, so you're pulling your fingers towards your forearm, and then move towards the inside and then point up, come into flexion, so those muscles underneath your hand will start to work towards the thumb side, and then down, and then reverse. We'll go the other way. So try not to let your forearm shift as you're moving your wrist through these circles. Good, let that go. On the other side, pin the elbow in, hand comes to the top. So teachers that I've had have said, imagine your forearm, your cell phone, excuse me, is balancing on the top of your forearm, so you don't want that forearm to shift and your cell phone to fall down. So extension, pinky side, up to flexion, thumb side, over as much as possible, back to extension, and then reverse. So thumb side, flex, pinky side, and back to extension. Okay, so don't, not forgetting about that uh, radiation that we talked about, so you still want some tension in the other joints that we can really focus on the working joint. Next, shoulder circles. So hand, your left hand is going to come to your chest to stop your torso from twisting, and then you're going to make a karate chop hand, thumb up, and you're going to come up till you reach a point where you can't go anymore into your shoulder flexion, then rotate the palm out, trace it back, and then you'll end with the knuckles scraping or touching that thigh. And then as you come back, careful not to lean forward, go as back as far as you can into extension. Then imagine you're wringing a towel out, and that's your upper arm as it rolls in your socket. Palm faces out again. And then come back forward and down. And we'll do that one more time. So reach up, imagining that humerus and upper arm bone rotating in your shoulder socket, the glenohumeral joint or the fossa, and then reach back as far as you can go without compensating in the spine, rotate that upper arm bone, come back up, and release, and then other side. And then what you can also do here is that it's not only checking in with how each part of your body is moving, but it also gives you a good indication of what one is doing compared to the other. Back up to extension, rotate that palm out, back up, close it to the ear, and down again. One more time, we'll give you the side view. So still tensing, pressing into the ground, lower body is turned on, so is that abdomen up to flexion, rotate that palm out, reach back without twisting the torso, knuckles scrape, the outer thigh, reach back, and then somebody else described it as a mortar at tussle, that bone moving in the socket, and back.
next for your spine. So cross the arms, take a nice deep breath in, and then exhale round. Careful not to borrow from the pelvis. Then turn your belly button towards your right hip, side bend towards that hip, and then reach up, trying to make the front of your body as long as possible. Laterally bend on the other side, so I'm side bending on the left. Then turn my belly button towards the left and round back to center and then go in the other direction. So inhale in and then round, chin to chest. I'm going to turn my belly towards the left, side bend, pressing my feet away, extend over to the other side, side bend, turn my belly towards that right hip without turning my whole pelvis. Flex and come back. And we'll come down to the ground and we'll just get into the spine a little bit more. So sit up in all fours, however you feel comfortable, pillow or folded mat underneath your knees and your wrists underneath your shoulders. So we'll start kind of in the angry cat pose here. So spine flex as much as possible, head and neck is released, tailbone is reaching down. Then starting from the pelvis, we're going to start to tip the pelvis forward and lift the tailbone up without changing the other parts of your spine. So lift that tailbone up and you'll start to find that curve and you'll extend in the low back as the belly drops down. And then try to move bone by bone, articulating through the spine as we get up towards the upper back or the mid, or the mid back and the upper back between the shoulder blades. And then finally the neck and then starting from the bottom of the spine again, we're going to go back towards flexion. So I'm going to tip my pelvis down and back. So reach the tailbone down between your legs. Keep looking forward, prevent everything else coming along for the ride. Lift the low belly up, then the mid belly, the lower ribs, sternum, all the way up and then the head and let that go. Then we'll get into the hip joint. So hip cars, we did this last week if any of you guys um, participated. So try to keep yourself honest here. You're not borrowing from the spine. We're just trying to isolate the movement of that femur in the hip socket, in the pelvis. So pull that left knee in towards the chest without rounding out, laterally open. So abduct, keep the knee there and then rotate in, come into hip extension, push the foot up towards the ceiling and then reset and reverse the movement up towards hip extension, push that foot through the ceiling, open that knee up like the doggy at the fire hydrant and then pull the knee back in again. We'll go one more time. So knee comes up, so hip flexion, out to the side, back to extension, and try not to tip the opposite side of the pelvis as well. Out to the side, and back in. Other side. So knee comes up, out to the side, back into extension, and reverse the movement. Push that foot up, try to squeeze the heel towards the bum, Open out laterally and then pull that knee back in. One more time. Out to the side, rotate up, extend the hip, feel the glute working, reset and reverse the movement. Hip extension, open to the side and then come back in. Next, the knees. So, Talk about the knees more as like a hinge joint, but there's some rotation that's happening at the tibia. So if you just place your fingers at the, at the kind of just below the patella or the, the kneecap, and then you shift the foot in and out, you can feel that rotation happening. So then loop the right arm underneath, and then you're going to clasp the left bicep, and then this foot can be tucked under you or it can be extended, and then we're going to take us through some knee cars. So uh, move the toe in towards the middle and then lift up, extend, 
rotate over to the side and back down and then squeeze the lower leg in towards the hamstring. One more time in that direction, stand up, over, good. And now stay on that side, lift up, so reverse the direction, down, squeeze in, laterally rotate, extend, medially rotate, and squeeze in. Next, stay on this side, interlace the hands, place it over top that tibia, and now we don't want that rotation happening, we want to isolate the movement in the ankle. So point the toes down, rotate in, Pull the toes up, extend, moving into dorsiflexion, open up to the side, point down, and then reverse the movement. Over to the side, toes will participate or not, and that's okay if we're not really focusing on one or the other. And then release that and change sides. So first feel that rotation as you move the foot in and out. You'll feel that movement at the top here of the, of the tibia where it meets the femur. Then loop that arm underneath, clasp the opposite bicep, and hand can come here. So rotate in, extend, rotate laterally, and then squeeze back in. So we're activating the back of the leg as well. One more time in that direction. Good, and then reverse it. Stay laterally rotated, extend, medial, Come back down one more time lift up over and down clasp in front so stop that movement from happening and then just into the ankle point come towards the middle or the midline of the body out to the side and point down had tons of ankle sprains on this side so for me this is my tougher side and you'll get to know your body better as you move through these cars. Great. Okay, come to standing. And then for any of you that follow my page, uh, this week I posted a little foot mobility routine, which is a great thing to incorporate every day, no matter what you're doing. But we'll just do the toe portion for right now. So press into your feet, soften the knees, and then find the ball of the the base of the little toe and the big toe and the middle of your heel. Press into those points and then lift your toes up off the ground. Notice your fingers might start to do funky things, that's okay. And then release again. Keep the toes down and then try to just lift the big toes. Big toes come down and just lift the other toes. And then keep alternating. Big toes, other toes, the other ones that went to the market. Okay, last time. Now lift all of your toes up, and now big toes go down. Keep the big toes lifted, and then the other toes go down. So moving seemingly in, in the same way, but from a different starting point. Okay, one more time, toes come down, and release. So you can do much more of that, it can be a lot more detailed, but that is basically your morning cars routine. It took a little bit longer to do it because I was explaining it in detail, but that's something that you can do every morning while you're making the coffee. I do it while I'm having my coffee, and um, I, I really try to do it every single day. But it's also a great prep on its own for any movement activity that, that you like to do. So from here, we'll add to it. So we'll come down supine, or on your back. And just get a sense of your body. Check in with it, see how you feel. Breathing through your nose. Feeling your breath all around your spine as you breathe in and out. So it's a three-dimensional breath. Then hands can come out into a T, palms come down, lift your feet up so you're in kind of a 90 degree angle here, and then we're just going to twist with breath. So as I exhale, knees come down, and inhale, I come back. Exhale down, inhale up, and then I can change it. I can inhale down, exhale up. Or it can just be a movement that's not married to your breath. You can really decide. And then to add a little bit 
or to layer on another movement component is next time as I go to the side, my knees stay stacked and I'm going to reach my foot out like I'm trying to karate chop a friend who's nearby. Not sure my leg's two meters, but maybe it's a family member and you don't have to socially distance. So you're getting a stretch, you're getting a little bit of action along that IT band and the lateral hip. Let's do one more. Try to keep your head and your shoulders relaxed. Come back down. Then let's get into the hamstring. So especially if you're going to go out running or lift or you're doing some sort of interval training, these are muscles that you want to get online. You want to get fired up. So tilt your pelvis backwards, come up into a bridge pose. Try to avoid this happening. I've said it a lot when we've done this, relax your uh, back ribs down and have the extension happening in the hips, not in the spine. From here, pull the toes up and then start to walk the feet out. Hands can come down to give you a little bit of support. So you're going to notice this here. Your body needs to turn on the hamstrings and then press into the opposite one as you claw your way back again. Good. Let's do that one more time. So toes stay up, heels walk out. Try to stop your pelvis from shifting side to side and keeping those ribs down will stop your low back hopefully from talking to you. Come down, have a little break, shake that out. And then come back up into your bridge, press into your left foot. To more challenging would be hands up or um, equally, not equally as challenging, but still challenging would be to have the hands anchored. So left foot presses down, pelvis stays stable, pull your right knee into your chest. And then just hold. So once you're here, Try to keep everything level and then you can reach the arms up, breathe and come back down before you drop your hips down, press into the right foot, stop your pelvis from shifting and then come into hip flexion and then you can decide, nope, this is perfectly fine, hands here or you can reach up here and then you've got a little bit less help from the rest of your body to keep everything Stable. So breathing all around your spine, last breath, and then come back down again. And then, still talking to those hamstrings, we're going to come onto uh, the belly. And then uh, you can be kind of on the forearms here, or you can be resting your head on your hands. I'm going to come up a little bit so that you can, you can still hear me uh, talking. So as you're doing it here, you want to keep your hip points or the front of your pelvis on the ground. So as we lift, we're going to go into hip extension. You don't want to lift and shift. So keep your pelvis pushed down. You're trying to lift your low belly off the ground. You're in a little bit of a posterior pelvic tilt. And then you're going to lift that left leg up. And then from here, keep pressing. Find a little bit of um, external rotation. So that means you're going to open your the angle of your leg out to the side a little bit and the top of your foot is going to face a little bit more to the side versus your mat. And then that fires the glute a little bit more. We're also talking to the hamstrings. Now, plantar flex and dorsiflex. So pull the toes in, dorsiflex, and then plantar flex. So keep that contraction going and then mobilize that ankle. Let's do one more and release other side shake it out a little bit so posterior tilt pull that low belly up off the ground but keep your pelvis level lift the right leg open it slightly to the side so that really fire into that glute and then pull the toes to the shin and point the toes hopefully not getting any foot cramps here if you do, it's not terrible, just try to let it pass and catch back up when you've got a second. Let's do one more, going in, good. Okay, next, getting into the more dynamic stuff, 
So come to a lunge. We'll start with the right foot forward. And again, you can pad underneath the back knee if you need. So not such a wide stance, but a little bit more than kind of 90-90. So, and you want to have your foot not directly in front of that back knee. And we'll come to the toes of that uh, left foot. So from here, hands are going to come to the right thigh. And almost like you're trying to give your thigh a little bit of a facelift, you're going to stack your hands and you're going to pull the skin of your, of, your, of your thigh away from your hip as you press in with both hands and lock out your elbows. At this point, you're going to start to round your spine. So I'm pulling my belly away from my thigh as my hands are also moving themselves away from my belly. And I'm trying to pull my pelvis back and round and flex my spine. So hopefully you'll feel a little bit more of a stretch happening at the front of that left hip. Breathe here. And then start to slowly unwind. Keep that sensation of stretch. Press into that back foot. And then come in as your knee tracks over your middle toes. You're pressing deeper into the stretch. So we're not arching, we're keeping the integrity of the spine, keeping the stretch, and I'm using my glute to push me a little bit deeper into the stretch. Next, imagine you're taking that left knee and you're swiping it forward. So I'm not really using my right foot to push me back. I use my knee moving forward in space to pull me back to my starting position. Let's do that two more times. So glute and foot pushes me forward, deeper into that stretch, and then pull, drag that knee forward, almost like a scissoring action. So this foot's almost pulling back as this knee pulls forward, and you should feel this tissue at the front of the left leg um, light up a little bit more. One more. So glutes pushing me in, and then hip flexor, quads, pulling me out, change sides. So keeping that breath as you're, as you're checking, you don't want to go too deep into anything, any stretch, any movement where um, if there's such a discomfort or um, an intense sensation that you can't take a full breath. So we don't want that. So same thing here, like who doesn't want to facelift, right? Like in times of COVID, let's get all the facelifts that we can get. So Hands interlaced or on top of one another, pulling that skin nice and taut. And then at the same time, the hands are moving away towards the kneecap. And then belly, pelvis is back. And then I'm rounding. And even, so facelift good, double chin bad, but that's what we're after. Double chin, round the spine. And then feel, as you're putting all those pieces together, feel the stretch get a little bit more intense at the front of that right hip. Let's do one more breath. Good, and then try to keep the intensity of stretch there if it's okay, if it's manageable at the front of that right hip. Forgot to tuck my toes, not a big deal. And then we'll move to the kinetic stretching here. So as you tuck your toes, try to feel that uh, right glute fire and then use that connection there as the left knee tracks towards the pinky toe or over the middle toes, you're using those muscles to push you a little bit deeper into it without losing the stretch at the front of that right hip. And then dragging that right knee forward, it's not gonna move, but that's the action you want. And then what pulls you back is not this foot just pushing you back in again, it's that squeezing and then the front of that right hip to get you back again. So let's do two more. Pushing with the foot and the glute, and then dragging that right knee forward to come back up again. One more time, pushing forward, and then pulling that right knee forward. Whew, that one was a little bit intense. Okay, last thing here before a little bit, two more dynamic things, and then we'll call it a day. I'm this way so that you can see me. So, um, right foot forward. Uh, similar lunge setup as we just did, but now we're going to get into a little bit more of a straight leg. 
So we'll just start hands on hips, keeping the pelvis neutral. I'm, I'm stacked here, nice pillar uh, position between my knee, my hips, my shoulders, and my skull. You don't want to lose that. And then you're going to hinge, and you're going to come back a little bit and straighten that leg as you pull the toes up. So we'll do that a few times. We're not bouncing in and out of it. We're just moving through a range with a flexed knee and an extended knee. Good, and then now hands can come down and we'll do the same thing, but we're a little bit more supported here. So I'm taking some weight into my hands and then I can increase the range of motion here. So if my left knee allows for it, I can come back and I can sit on that or I can put a, a block or a cushion in between my calf and my hamstring. And then I'm moving from my lunge back into a stretch. Good. Switch sides. So starting, I'll face this way. So that 9090 shape with the uh, knees on top of the uh, ankles or the heels, hands to hips, integrated here, nice pillar, and then pull back, and then try not to twist the pelvis to one side. So I'm hinging, and then you don't have to come to a straight leg. Maybe for you it's just to here and you get enough of a stretch. So you feel it out for your own body to see what feels the best. And then you can explore a little bit more range. Hands can come down. You can adjust the back leg. So it starts quite similarly. And then you can come to the top of the foot, sit back. I got a nice little crack there. So again, it can just be this. Okay, or you can explore a little bit more range of motion. So that you can come to standing. And then the last thing, we're going to get into a little bit more dynamic um, lunging. So it's going to start from, start with the right leg. It's going to start from active hip flexion. So I'm coming up. And then you're going to bring the opposite arm forward, right? Much like our gait, our running uh, stance in a running pattern and then I'm going to lunge forward and then come back pushing with power to see if I can hold that hip flexion so maybe make your lunge out a little bit shorter come down slight bend in and then pop up lunge in and then pop good and then to that we're going to layer that hinge, but now from a standing position. So active knee flexion and hinging down. Active knee flexion and then hinging down. So you can straighten that back leg if you like, or it can stay bent. The movement that we're really seeking is that hinge pattern, that single leg stability. So then we combine them all together. You've got your forward lunge, pop up to hold, back to our hinge, back to our flexion. Okay, so you've got a little bit more of a dynamic preparatory movement for whatever it is you're going to do, or it can be a standalone workout if you just keep doing a little bit more. We'll do the other side. So active flexion, active foot, so I'm driving the floor away from me with that right foot coming forward and then back up so we'll start just by isolating here and then we layer on our hinge so from here reaching forward and then driving back up you can also play with the tempo so I can go slow into my hinge and then drive back up with a little bit more um, dynamic energy. And then combine all of them. Hinging forward or lunging forward. Ooh, wobble. Back up to hip flexion. 
Hinge back, drive up. So there's a hold, there's an element of stability and control to come through your flexion and power to push you forward. Geez, gotta work on that side. <laughs> push forward and then up. That was better. And then hinge and back. So you can see that there's all kinds of ways that you can combine different movements that are gonna get your glutes, your hamstrings, your quads, your ankles, your feet online, right muscles firing so that you're better equipped to enjoy the movement practices that you currently enjoy. So again, the CARS practice, standalone morning routine, or it's great movement prep for whatever you're doing. So think about flossing your teeth on the daily, try to do your CARS on the daily as well. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it, a little bit shorter, short and sweet, and nice and dynamic to end it. Hi Elsa, hi Kate. And uh, Sammy and Rowan, I'm not sure if you guys uh, joined, but um, nice to see familiar faces and new faces as well. So enjoy your weekend, and if any of you are so inclined, Grain de Sel is a community support and food bank in my area. Um, donations of 5, 10, 20 bucks, whatever you can uh, spare, I know they would welcome it um, in these tough times. Love you too, Elsa. So have a great day, everybody. Enjoy your weekend.